The following podcast contains references to the consumption of alcohol. If you are not of legal drinking age, please do not consume alcohol. Also, if you are of legal drinking age, please drink responsibly. Welcome to Rhetorical Magic Cocktail Hour. My name is Ryan, and my favorite Animal Crossing character is Wardell. Oh, I forgot about the Happy Homes people. <laughs> my name is Matthew, and my favorite good sweet Animal Crossing boy is Tortimer. <laughs> Tortimer. <laughs> Everybody's favorite uncle slash grandpa, but not Uncle Grandpa. <laughs> because <laughs> that's something different <laughs> that's a different ip baby uh this is a podcast mm-hmm. sometimes where we like to sit down have a drink and then we try to be succinct about various topics and mm-hmm. goings ons yeah and talk about uncle grandpa <laughs> and talk about uncle grandpa it's our uncle grandpa rewatch podcast <laughs> That sounds so mean. I don't want to do that. <laughs> uh, no, but this is... We are kind of revisiting something that we've done before. Mm-hmm. Uh, what Twilight. is everybody's... <laughs> Welcome to the Twilight Podcast. In this episode, we're going to be talking about wigs. Uh, no. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> um... Oh, that would be a fun segment. It's like you crop out the hair and I have to tell you whose it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do that but no Matthew and I have been thinking and pondering about different things that we could do and we figured what is everybody's favorite part of any podcast ever theme song segments but okay segments <laughs> segments <laughs> goofs and gags uh, goofs and gags and gaffs that's what we like uh, so we're doing another segment episode where we just kind of pick things we've done in the past that we liked, and we're just going to highlight them, because it's fun, and it's our podcast, not yours. Yeah. Yeah. yeah <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of energy in this room today, mm-hmm. uh, but before we get into that, we should probably address the first part of that podcast aspect of drinking. Matthew, what are you drinking today? Today, I'm drinking... The worst named soda of all time. Squirt. Oh, yeah, that's not a good one. So yeah, I'm I'm just I'm squirting it up today. Uh Ooh, what are you okay. doing, man? <laughs> <laughs> uh I'm having a rum and coke because Ooh. I wanted one. College classic. Mm-hmm. What, it what tastes kinda... like twenty one. <laughs> so say what kind of flavor profile are, are you getting with that one um i did use a i had a little bit of kraken so my parents don't drink not for like any reason other than they just really don't anymore um and so every time i go home they like relinquish alcohol <laughs> that they don't use mm-hmm. anymore and so i there was like a kraken bottle with just like a tiny amount so i just poured that in there so it's like a Warm spiced moment. Nothing mm-hmm. too wild. Yeah, the, the moment you said Kraken, I had like vivid sense memory of drinking too much Kraken and just being like, oh no. <laughs> yeah. Not I f- fun. I feel like Kraken. Drink responsibly. Yes. I feel like Kraken has kind of passed its like moment. I feel like there was like a period where I feel like that was like the rum that a lot of people were drinking, especially as far as like mm-hmm. spiced rums went. And, like, it's not bad. It's very vanilla-forward and nice. Um, it it mm-hmm. is honestly great in a rum and coke. <laughs> yeah. I think the reason why I bought it so much was just because of the bottle and the branding. Yeah. I'm, I'm mean, a very aesthetic-first kind of person. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. 
Not that I only drinks Hendrix gin. <laughs> oh, I need to get that before the end of the summer. I need to get more midsummer gin. <laughs> oh wait, it's spring. Oh. As it say. <laughs> I got time. You got time. Oh no. <laughs> Why don't we do a segment? Why don't we do a segment? Why don't we do our first segment of the afternoon? Matthew, what is our first segment? Our first segment is... I am... I am DB... What what did I call it? I don't remember. (laughs) I don't remember either. I think I call it something different every time. Uh, Review... Okay, so this first one... (laughs) Um, let's see. I'm going to be reading, uh, IMDb reviews to Ryan, and Ryan will guess the movie that we're reviewing, and, as a special treat, I've, there's a theme here. I'm not going to tell you the theme. Ooh, I have to guess but it. But if you can guess it, if you, if you can guess it before the last one, I will give you a $50 Olive Garden gift card. I, I, you love to see it. Who doesn't want a fifty dollar <laughs> Olive Garden gift card? Um, I can also give you the star rating, okay. the date of the review, okay. and how many people found it helpful. So, if you want any of those after I read the review, just let me know. Okay. Okay. The first one is titled. Great title, visuals, soundtrack, and action, but soulless and unengaging by The Little Songbird. Ever since I first heard of the movie, it was actually one of my most wanted-to-see movies of the year. However, when it came to seeing it, I found it was a letdown. Not all of it was a mess, though. It's a well-made movie with cinematography and editing that are to be admired in settings and costumes That are not only great, but some show imagination. Uh, The soundtrack is fitting and memorable. And while the first action scene was a tad overlong, the action is beautifully choreographed and definitely one of the most interesting parts of the movie. The letdowns, however, are in the story and the writing. The writing is mostly awful, particularly in the slower moments uh, where those moments are peppered with schmaltz. In conclusion... Wanted to like it, but there were too many flaws that prevented me from properly engaging with it. Okay. Was it an Avengers movie? No. Damn it. <laughs> Was it a superhero movie? N- no, but I think it was a comic book first. But don't quote me on that. <laughs> okay. Sorry, when you said that, my brain went Scott Pilgrim. Is it Scott Pilgrim? But I don't think that there's, like, no. a fantastic action scene. What are you talking about? The scene where uh, he throws the box into the trash can? Oh, true. How silly of me. Um, okay. But but it's not Scott Pilgrim. It may have been a comic. Can I get the uh, star rating on that bad boy? It is a four out of ten. Is that how the rating goes on IMDb? Mm-hmm. Oh. It's out of ten stars. Okay. Based on a comic book. And how I can many... give you I can give you the two actors who are named in the review if you want that. Yes, too. please. Daniel Craig and Harrison Ford. Is it a James Bond movie? No. That doesn't help me at all. I didn't even realize those two were in a movie together. (laughs) Um, How many people found it helpful? Nine out of 19. So just about half. I have no idea, buddy. You're going to have to... I'm going to have to take the L on this one. It is Cowboys and Aliens. Cowboys and Aliens. <laughs> I vaguely remember that being a movie that existed. That was like, can I try and guess the 
Can I try and guess the year? Did it come out in like 2011? That's when the uh, review is. Oh. But let me let me confirm real quick. Yes, 2011. Nice. Spot on. <laughs> well. Okay. Fudge and that do you one. Have, do you have any guesses on the theme? Any guesses on I the would... theme? Yeah. Uh, is it versus? Like something versus no. something? Damn. Okay. No, it's not. Okay. So, let's move on to the next one. <clears throat> this one, I will give you, uh, in advance, there are no stars with this one somehow. <laughs> okay. So, you there? I can't give you a star rating, but I can still give you how many people found it helpful in the year of the review. Okay. This one's called Excellent Acting and Script. Okay. This film is about a highly dysfunctional family's road trip to California in order for the youngest daughter to participate in a beauty contest. This film is a very special, and it <laughs> entirely relies on the script and the acting to keep the viewers interested. There are no special effects, no grand set designs or extravagant costumes. <laughs> acting by the whole cast is excellent. The script shows one dysfunctional argument after another. The arguments are interesting and not superficial. The events that happen are bizarre and comical, such as the car breaking down, and subsequent pushes for the car to start and or the removal of a dead body. These comical events are presented seriously, <laughs> so it creates an interesting contrast between the events and the prevailing mood of the film. This film is very memorable. What, what obvious film is that one? <laughs> uh, I would like to guess that and the theme, please. Okay. Uh, the movie, I'll, I'll take the film first. <laughs> the movie is Little Miss Sunshine and is the theme... Yes. Paul Dano? Yes. <laughs> Congratulations, you now are the proud owner of a $50 Olive Garden gift card. <laughs> and also, did you know that Paul Dano's in Cowboy and, and Aliens? <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> so that's fun. I didn't, but I do know the thing that we've been talking about the most lately. <laughs> <laughs> I did maybe change the theme of this one because we have been talking about Paul Dano so much. <laughs> Okay. So I've got two more. Okay. And I feel like they're going to be exceedingly obvious now. Okay. I only know, like, two other movies that Paul Dano's in, so my chances are potentially good. Guess what? <laughs> it's probably those. <laughs> Wait. Okay. This one... Mm. Never mind. I was going to... Let me, like, write down... Write them down. And then we'll see. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have them written down. I'm ready. Okay. So this one, the review is called More Than Just a One Joke Idea Slash Film by Cosm... Cos... 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 Mm -hmm. Oh, and I forgot to say, the last review was by Gordon11. So okay. thank you, Gordon11, for your contribution. Thank you, Gordon11. Um, <clears throat> yes. You can reduce this to one thing that's probably very prominent in the trailer. But a farting joke is more than meets the eye. You can smell, I mean, tell by watching. Seriously, though, the movie does not run out of fumes. <laughs> you know it's easy to make even more jokes, but the movie itself or the filmmakers are serious about being funny and inventive at the same time. Um, that's going to be obvious... I think the filmmakers did a great job, and it's not only borderline crazy, but also genius. If you like weird and unexpected, this is for you. I also love the fact that even in the at the ending, when you go or when you think, okay, the movie is finally faltered, it pulls an ace uh, out of its well enough of the jokes. Let's just say I can highly recommend this movie. Um, yes, I'm very so what's confident. A, what's a Paul Dano that... movie with a good fart? <laughs> Joke, I'm very confident I know what this one is. This one is Swiss Army Man. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. That was on my list. <laughs> okay. And I'm guessing this next one is on your list as well. Probably. <laughs> okay. I'm going to read the title mm -hmm. and then ask if you want to take a stab at okay. it. <laughs> Neo-noir detective film. Yep. It's the Batman. <laughs> yep. 
See, this one I was saving for last because it's like, this is obviously the Batman. <laughs> um, do I actually want to read it? Because it's a lot of words. No, you guessed it. <laughs> I'm not going to read it. <laughs> Thank you. If you want to go on... If you want to go on IMDb and find a 7 out of 10 rating review called Neo Noir Detective Film, that's what I was going to read. Yep. <laughs> and I'm seeing now that Ryan has written Swiss Army Man and The Batman, <laughs> the two other Paul Dano movies. <laughs> what else? He hasn't really been in anything else, though, has he? No, this one was kind of hard. Because <laughs> it's like, I need it to be a movie that is... Big enough that Ryan would know it, but also I can't have the review just say Batman over and over. <laughs> and that was segment one. Segment one. <laughs> Finished. We did it. Uh, do we want to uh, hop right into our second segment of the evening? Let's hop right into it. Uh, so this one is one that I do for Matthew. Mm -hmm. And it was previously called, if I remember correctly, The Stars of Our Stars. Yes. But this time I'm calling it Stars Crossing. <laughs> because you oh. guessed it. We're figuring out the horoscopes of the wackiest and wildest Animal Crossing... <laughs> <laughs> villagers and characters. Ooh, love it. We love to see it. Love to um, see it. I was telling Matthew earlier that I have, for each horoscope, I have pulled one female villager, one male villager, and then one of the special characters. So your, your CJs, your Saharas, your... Trying to think of other ones that aren't on the list, and it's coming up blank. Mabel's. <laughs> Mabel's. Timmy and Tommy. All Rossetti. I don't think I had him on there. And so we're going to go through. Now. I'm ready. Wait. Okay. So I'll be able to give you their name, and then if you need, like, a refresher on who they are, I can give you what originally was supposed to be a descriptor, but kind of turned into, like, me just feeling out their vibe and a little bit bullying. So okay. <laughs> Sounds good. It might not be the most helpful, but we're going to try. Um, all right, let's start with one that I'm pretty sure that you will know, because they were on my island. Uh, what is... What is the zodiac sign for Penelope? Penelope. Penelope is an elephant? No. No. Would you like to know what Penelope is? Yes, please. Uh, my descriptor for Penelope is Tessa Violet Mouse. Oh, yeah. Very jarring. <laughs> Very jarring <laughs> villager to look at. Um... Hmm. Tessa Violet Mouse. What? What would? What would a Tessa Violet Mouse's sign be? What are signs that I could say? That's a fun game. Um, Can Matthew remember the signs? Sagittarius. She's not a Sagittarius. <laughs> Libra. Nope. Pisces. It starts with an A. Aquarius. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. Woo. My dumb brain was like, Apricorn? <laughs> okay. And so I think because of how long it did take us to get to the answer, <laughs> I might just list the other two that I picked. Okay. Yeah. Just give me, give me all three at once. Who, okay. were, who were the other two for the Aquarius? Uh, Ribot, the robot frog, and Wardell, my favorite guy. My favorite fella. My buddy, my Everybody's guy. Everybody's good, sweet friend who you buy stuff from. Okay. So this next group is honestly pretty stellar. 
And one might kind of give it away, but maybe not. Okay. Um, okay. So we have Gale, Angus, and Flick. Do you want to know Flick? what they... Flick is the bugman. Is the bug one. The bugman. Is yes. Angus a cow? Angus is Guy Fieri cow. <laughs> <laughs> How can Guy Fieri, Cow, and Flick be the same sign? <laughs> Just, that does not compute. And then Gale is the sapphic alligator. You can't mm. look at her and tell me she's not gay. She's very pink and very cute. Hmm. And one of these gives it away? <laughs> mm-hmm. Huh. Let's see. Horus. Yeah. I was like, which one of these animals is a is a, a sign? And that was the only one I could think of because I'm not a hundred percent sure what Flick is. Is Flick like an iguana? I think he's a chameleon. Chameleon. I could be wrong. That All sounds right. Righty. So this one, I don't know this is going to help because I don't I don't see their personalities matching. But for this next one, we have Maple, who is the sweetest little cub, the sweetest, cutest. She wears that little pine tree sweater. Love her. Uh, Love Roscoe, who I did write goth bear, but it is definitely a horse. And I think that I was thinking <laughs> of a different bear. He just has big horse energy. <laughs> No, he, he is a horse. He just has bear energy. Oh, he has bear energy. Sorry. And then Tom Nook, a.k.a. Capitalist Monster. Hmm. Hmm. See, I would think Raymond and Tom Nook would be the same, because Raymond is very into, like, investing in stocks. No. Nope. In my head. They're not the same, though. <laughs> that might just be a drawfy goof, though. <laughs> um... <laughs> Hmm. So it was Tom Nook, mm -hmm. Roscoe. I feel like the ringer for this one is Tom Nook. It's Tom Nook. Yeah. Which which star sign just loves capitalism? Um. Think evil. Think we don't associate. Gemini. Yeah. <laughs> Oh no, Tangy has the same star sign as Tom Nook. Yeah. <laughs> Those are, some of them make sense, others don't. Alrighty. Our next group are uh, Felicity, potentially mm. one of the greatest villagers, Pietro, and Daisy yes. May. Daisy May is basically Tom Nook. If Tom Nook was about small businesses and not capitalism. Yeah. Daisy May is the turnip seller. Pietro is our clown sheep. This was early in, so I was still just trying to give a descriptor. And Felicity mm -hmm. is Cat with Bob, who acts like she's cooler than you. They're really a lot of the cats do, too. So somebody who's... Somebody who thinks they're cooler than you. Leo? Mm-mm. Hmm. Who's, who's full of themselves? Am I going down the wrong path with this line of thinking? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a sign you don't know much about. Uh, it's a, it's a fire sign. Fire sign? Yeah. Capricorn? Nope. I don't think Capricorn's a fire sign, bud. <laughs> it didn't feel like one as I was saying it. Um... Fire sign. Fire sign. Libra? Nope. Again, I don't think that was a fire sign, but... <laughs> uh. So it's a fire sign, but the name uh, is kind of misleading. Aquari Aquarius? No. Pisces? No. It's misleading. Slightly. Maybe I'm taking you down the wrong... It's... Can I just tell you, or do you want to keep Scorpio? Nope. <laughs> Sagittarius. Nope. <laughs> uh, 
Leo's the only one that I know for sure is a fire sign. <laughs> Think, uh, oh god, if I'm wrong, I'm gonna sound so stupid. Potentially a god of war, but spelled wrong. Aries? Yeah. <laughs> Aries, uh, Aries, yeah. Yeah. Is that what it is? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think it's I spelled differently, it. though. Okay, uh, I kept saying it. It's like, no, that's the other one. And then I would say it again. It's like, wait, no, that's the other one. But it's both. <laughs> I like how you were saying it, like, when it sounds like you got, like, a word jumble. You know what I'm talking about? Like, when, like, the word, yeah. like, a mad gab or something. Where it's like, you're saying the word, but you don't. But understand you, that yeah, it's a word. it hasn't registered <laughs> that you're actually saying it. So you just try to say it confidently and hope that they move on. <laughs> yeah. Confidence is key. Confidence is key. Okay. So because you don't know anything about the signs, I am just going to go down the list now and I'm not going to like try to jump around. <laughs> um, our next three are Bree, the green haired mouse. Marlo, who um, I don't remember much about, but I did write incel hamster, so mm. that's the descriptor. And then Reese, who I wrote as cotton candy llama wife. Reese is the only one who I know who that is, so that's going to be fun. Uh, um, I think I had Bree on my island for a bit. I've had a lot of mice come through that don't stick around. I feel like... With Reese in there, it's going to be one that's really, like, open and loving. Okay. So, <laughs> not knowing anything about any of the signs. Or, I, I guess I do know, I just don't remember. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to say, who is in February? Um... And I'll know not to say that one <laughs> for some reason. Um, I'm going to say Sagittarius. N- nope. Is that your final answer? Um, <laughs> Scorpio. I... No. Pisces. Nope. I'll give you one more shot. Okay. One more shot. Leo. Nope. Cancer. Uh, oh. <laughs> the one that I don't think I had said or even thought about. Yeah, I, I think that's... The, I don't think that that one has been brought up at all from your end. <clears throat> all right, this next crew hosts a favorite of yours, I believe. Maybe? I could be wrong. Um, so we have Ketchup, who I just wrote as Tomato Duck. Yep, I know who Ketchup is. Yes. Tad, who I wrote as Uwu Frog, because his mouth is kind of like... <laughs> uwu shape. It, yeah, in my head, it I, makes sense. And it then makes sense to me. Harvey. Harvey. The hippie dog. Yeah. Harvey. Harvey Dent. Where's Harvey? Yep. Batman? Mm-hmm. Yep. Um... Stalling for time. <laughs> um, I'm gonna say, and I might have already said this one, Aquarius. Uh, we have said, and that's already been an answer. So no, yep. it is it is not Aquarius. You're thinking. I felt of- it in my heart, but I didn't know it in my brain. <laughs> um, I'm gonna say. Pisces. Nope. Um, Libra. Nope. You're you're so close. In terms of like where it falls. I'm gonna say letter. What has what has a common letter with Libra? Leo. There we go. You Leo. Me and Ketchup. You and Ketchup. Buds forever. Okay. So, next we have Hazel, who is the unibrow squirrel, Octavian, Mm -hmm. the angry octopus, and Celeste, who's the astrology squirrel. Hmm. Astrology. 
Uh, Gwirl. Oh, she's... Do what? Astrology Gwirl. Not... Oh, sorry, Gwirl. Yes. Um, let's see. So she's smart. We know that. She, uh... She loves the stars. She, she arrives at night. I'm going to say Sagittarius. Nope. <laughs> and by Sagittarius, I mean... Virgo. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> With no help. <laughs> no help well, at all. Zero help. Okay. Our next crew... Uh, you honestly, I think... I Okay. I'm sending you brain thoughts of, like, conversations that have happened today. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. okay. Brain thoughts of conversations that have happened today. All right. Mm-hmm. And you're going to you're gonna get this one, okay? I'm going to get this one. You're going to get this one. You're going to know it. All right. So, first we have Petrie, the girl Petrie. in STEM. With, like, the red and big glasses. She's a mouse. It sounds... Okay. Okay. Raymond. Business cat. And then mm-hmm. Brewster. Brewster. Oh, I did just write pigeon milk. <laughs> but we know he who does, Brewster is. <laughs> he does give you some pigeon milk sometimes, and you don't think about it. Um... Hmm. Before we recorded, we, we were had talking a conversation. About, yes, <laughs> it was a conversation through like this medium too, like not text. Mm-hmm. Come mm-hmm. on, you short got this. term memory. <laughs> what do they all have in common? Brain, brain, <laughs> Libra. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, Libra. <laughs> you should have Got listened to one. our horoscope episode again. I'm just I'm just giving the listeners time to answer. <laughs> this is intentional. This is a play it long at home kind of situation. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. So next we have Tia, who is the teapot elephant. Lucky, okay. the mummy dog. Mm-hmm. And then Sable, the quiet tailor. Mmm. Mmm. And your hint, you love catching these boys. I love catching these boys. Pokemon? <laughs> <laughs> um. I myself love catching these boys. In game. Pi- Pisces? What? What? <laughs> um, I love catching these boys in game. Yeah. What? <laughs> what can I catch in game? What? What? What animals? Fish. It's not a fish. <laughs> what else can you catch in the game? Bugs? Yeah. There's a bug? Scorpio. There we go. <laughs> My brain could not comprehend that there was a bug sign for the longest time. Okay. We have three more. God save us. God save us. Um, okay, so we have Azalea, the flower rhino, Knox, oh. the night chicken, and Isabel, the type A go-getter. The night chicken. <laughs> that is night with a K and Knox with a K. <laughs> not not <laughs> nighttime. Not nighttime chicken. <laughs> um mm. You said Isabel was the last one? Mm-hmm. Isabel's the spe- like the special character. Uh they share mm. they share a star sign with Jesus Christ. And that helps me. 
I mean, there was a song about it called Jesus is a... Capricorn. Yeah! <laughs> it was a game of which ones have I not said? <laughs> or which ones have I not correctly guessed, I guess. I've said a lot of them. Okay. The last one. Okay, it's the last yeah. one. Some may say best for last. <laughs> Pisces. No! <laughs> yes, <laughs> it is. You're so good you didn't even need the villagers. I didn't, but just out of curiosity. Uh, we have Molly, who I said is the cutest duck. Uh, Doc, who actually shares a birthday with me, and his descriptor is Griffin McElroy if he was a bunny. And mm-hmm. then Wisp, who's like that scared little ghost guy. So yeah, that's fun. Yeah, you got you got a spooky spooky uh, sign, buddy. Yeah, little scary yeah. guy. Um, okay, do we want to hop into a quick hydration station? Sure. And unwind from that. <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about? That was easy breezy. <laughs> Welcome to Hydration Station, the part of the show where I talk like an old time newscaster for some reason. <laughs> no, this is the part of the show where we like to take a sip of water because hydration is important. Mm-hmm. Especially when you're drinking hard liquor. Mm-hmm. Which at this point I have finished, so that's exciting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But it does mean I'm only going to be sipping on water the rest of the day. Because we drink responsibly Hashtag in this house. responsibly. Yes. All right, that was Hydration Station, buddy. <laughs> we did it. We did it. Hydration Station. That was Hydration Station, I think. <laughs> I'd, I'd say so. It is if I've ever heard one. It is. Uh, so we are going to do our next segment that we enjoyed, um, which is just a couple of Reddit's Am I the Asshole? Mm-hmm. And so this first one is, Am I the Asshole for not wanting to let in-laws take, ch- take child every week? If I get caught up, it is not my fault. Grammar is not everybody's first... <laughs> ability um (laughs) okay my husband's sister has kids had kids 15 years ago she was 25 and used his parents as babysitters overnights weekly as well as seeing them for family sunday dinners we now have a 15 month old and they are not happy that they haven't been able to take the baby they don't care about the pandemic or that the baby never took a bottle anyway now that he's older my husband always says in fights that his parents don't have the same connection with our son because they only see him for Sunday dinners. Am I the asshole for not caring and wanting to give my son over to them weekly plus Sunday dinners? When we need a babysitter, sure, but I don't think they need to have him weekly, even taking out overnights, to have a great relationship. We only get time as a family of three once during the week and on Sundays if my husband isn't with his friends during the day. And then we have Sunday dinner with his family. My husband and I are going to counseling because we only fight when it has to do with his family. He says I don't trust them, but honestly, I have reasons not to. His mom fed him a bottle wrong after I showed her how, and she just did the normal tilt back and shove in, so we got fluid in his lungs and we had to monitor for pneumonia. Husband refused to tell her. She also said prior that she does what she wants when babysitting and has ripped up his sitter's list. So I don't feel respected as a parent. So until my son can verbally communicate with me, I don't see the need in then having him all the time without us. So are they the asshole? I picked this one because who is the most qualified to determine parenting issues than two people who do not have kids? Yeah. Um. What? You, uh, who, who... Who, who, whose opinion should be heard first? Yours, because I just read it. 
Okay, that's fair. So, I think question asker is not the asshole in this situation and i was kind of on the fence up until i heard the 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 in-laws not respecting one of the parents wishes Mm -hmm. when it came to how their child should be looked after and that that one i don't know i mean i'm sure the in-laws have their own ideas of like how to raise a child because they've ri- risen tri- child raised risen children raised um raised <clears throat> but i mean ultimately it's not their kid mm-hmm. so i i'd say question asker is not the asshole i would agree but with i don't that. know i think i think the in-laws they're bordering on being the asshole, but not necessarily being the asshole. I think they're just being like, if I'm, I might be projecting a little. I think they might just have like that boomer self confidence that they shouldn't have. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, this is how I did it, and it worked fine. Yeah. But yeah. No, I definitely agree. I think I, at the end of the day, it's up to the parents to determine how the child is raised. And if the people in their life aren't adapting to that. Specifically when it is for the child's best interest. Like, if the parents are being neglectful, obviously there needs to be some form of intervention for the safety of the child. But mm-hmm. the mom sounds to know, seems to know what she's doing. And I, like, the sentence of, like, until her son can verbally communicate, like, I think that's because it's not saying that she's never going to let them do that. It's just like right yeah. now, the kid has no ability to like tell her what happened. So mm-hmm. she's just waiting until that form of communication is available before she lets. Which I think is totally fair. Mm-hmm. Also, in pandemic well, it... times, like I know a lot of people who are like very like, mm, you can't touch my baby, which is completely fair. Because yeah. their little baby lungs can't handle getting sick. Mm-hmm. And this is a very... <laughs> there's very gross sickness going around. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's also not like the in-laws never see the child, too. Yeah, like, they still see him once I mean, a they... week, and... Yeah. Yeah, I I think the, the grandparents are potentially in the wrong here. Mm-hmm. Okay. Settled. Settled. We did it. Okay. Next case. Am I the asshole for using the good pepper? <laughs> this is so stupid. I love that sentence. <laughs> this is so stupid. The good pepper. Stupid. But everyone thinks I'm an asshole, so... My sister has this thing where if you mix high quality and low quality ingredients, you've wasted the former. So, if I make a cheap frozen pizza and add some fresh spinach leaves to get a little bit of green, she gets mad and says I should have used frozen spinach, which sounds gross, so no. One thing that particularly annoys her is when I use fresh cracked black pepper when cooking hot food because the heat kills the freshness. But I don't like using the pre-cracked because it doesn't, it isn't as strong or as good. My sister says she gets final say because she buys the groceries, but that's her deal with mom for continuing to live at home rent-free even though she's over 18. But I hate arguing, so if I make a dish with pepper, I tend not to do it in front of her. Last night she tried something I made and said it tasted good, and then rather smugly pointed out that the pre-cracked pepper was just as strong. I corrected her and said it was fresh pepper. She got mad and stormed out. Sister thinks I'm the asshole for using good pepper. Mom thinks I'm not the asshole for the pepper, but I am the asshole for rubbing it in and not just letting her think what she wanted. Who's right? <laughs> the good pepper. <laughs> um, here's my philosophy on food. Do whatever you want. Because <laughs> it's, it's going to be shit in the end (laughs) so (laughs) it's lawless baby um, anarchy but um 
I don't know. I guess I can see where the sister's coming from. But at the end of the day, who cares? <laughs> um, I mean, I think question asker is right in this because like you can just because you're using something to like elevate a frozen pizza i don't know i would rather like i would rather fresh use spinach. fresh spinach to frozen spin- yeah the only thing i use frozen spinach for is if i'm making like a spinach dip yeah where it's like not super like fr- not 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 recognizable, you but you know what I mean. Yeah. Um yeah, I don't know. I think I think question asker's doing it right. I think Yeah, you gotta just yeah, stuff up fancy, somehow. <laughs> yeah, you gotta use the fancy ingredients to elevate the dish. I have seen Food Network. I know about <laughs> elevating dishes. So yeah, keep keep using that good pepper. <laughs> I love use the phrase using the good pepper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think question asker is wrong. I think the sister has some stuff that she needs to work out, maybe. Because it just... Yeah. It seems... It does kind of sound like a sibling fight where something else is really the issue. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But no, I don't think you're the asshole for using cracked pepper. And honestly, like, what's the actual difference... Like, in, in, I mean, throw throw the two dollars at your sister <laughs> for the amount of pepper you're going to use for the week. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, honestly, I don't think you'd have to have like a super palate to really care that much about fresh cracked pepper versus pre cracked. Anyway, I mean, I prefer fresh cracked to pre cracked. I agree. I do think the flavor is stronger uh, and it's and it is inherently better. But I yeah. I am pseudo pretentious. <laughs> yeah, I mean if you're if you're going for like a pretentious meal. Yeah. I maybe. But, I, I, mean, I use cracked like pepper more than I use pre cracked. Yeah. I would understand the sister's point if the question asker was like, Am I the asshole for using two ounces of pure saffron <laughs> like then i would get yeah. it <laughs> that's expensive that's a yeah, special you're, you're... spice <laughs> <laughs> that's that's in uh that's in the special spice cabinet am i the asshole for that using an entire <laughs> vanilla bean to stir my coffee <laughs> yes <laughs> yes <laughs> but cracked black pepper i <laughs> i don't think that it's that big of an issue <laughs> Yeah, I agree. There are some spices where you're the asshole, but <laughs> black pepper is not one no. of them. No. The good pepper. The good pepper. Uh, all right. We will do... Settle. We'll do this one, because I kind of like the less serious ones, and this will be the last one we do. Okay. Am I the asshole for ruining dinner with my joke? So my husband and I recently moved back to his hometown and bought a house near his parents. So we decided to host his family for dinner. I cooked up a few dishes, including French onion soup. The soup was a hit. His mom actually asked me for the recipe. And I jokingly said that the secret ingredient is my tears. Because it's onions. His mom stopped eating and stared at me. I tried to ease the tension by explaining that it was a joke, but she did not respond. After a few minutes, they got up and left. I knew that she was strict about knowing where her food came from, making sure that they're organic and non-GMO and things like that. We actually went grocery shopping with her before dinner as a reassurance, but I didn't realize an obvious onion joke would set her off. My husband has been trying to get her to talk to me, but she refuses. Am I the asshole? No. (laughs) (laughs) It was a joke. (laughs) It was a uh, yeah. This one. It was a joke, and it's one that I feel like was made has been made so many times. Like it's not. It's yeah, not like I, a new groundbreaking joke. And it's it's obvious. I don't know. It's obvious that the tears aren't going in the, the soup mm-hmm. to me. But I don't know. Based on the information. 
I'm gonna say not the asshole, but what I could potentially see being is we're not getting the full story, which is a flaw that we've talked about with Am I the Asshole previously. Mm-hmm. So, like, there There's could have been something in else <laughs> in the evening, and then that stupid joke was just, like, the end of it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. And I don't... It almost makes me wonder if the mother-in-law has, like, some sort of phobia... Or, like, aversion. Like germ issues. Yeah. And it, like, set her, set her off. Yeah. That might not be the right phrasing of that, but, like... You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I understand. Yeah. It, like, triggered the event. Like... Yeah. Um, but I think, with the information we have, I'm gonna say not the asshole, but I think that I would like a little bit of clarification, because I feel like a well-adjusted adult <laughs> would know that that's a joke. And I know, like, yeah. mother-in-law and wife of son is, like, a... Uh, touchy kind of relationship so there might be more Mm -hmm. to it but for that one I'm gonna say not the asshole I feel like I feel like not talking to the person is kind of an extreme reaction yeah yeah for sure granted I don't know how much they talked before the incident (laughs) yeah But yeah, so... like Yeah, like you said, we don't have all the information. We don't have all the information. So three not assholes, if I'm remembering correctly. And that was Am I the Asshole? Matthew, do you want to kick us off with our last segment of the evening? Maybe give a little history? Because <laughs> we call it something sure. different. <laughs> so, now, the main event. The reason why everybody's here... <laughs> We're going to play a little game called Smash, Smash, Smack Shrimony. Smash Shrimony. Can we get a cleaner version of that, bud? (laughs) No. (laughs) Smash, Smack, Smash Shrimony. That was my best try. (laughs) I don't think it's going to get any better. Which is our version of Fuck, Mary Kill. Yes. But it's just got got a little more fun, more fun of a name. Because we're quirky. (laughs) Because we're... We're quirky. We're, we're, Zoe, we're Zoe Deschanel. <laughs> um, so, if, if you don't understand how the game works already, don't worry. I'm here to explain. Um, one of us is going to list three people and or things. And then each of us are going to assign them either a smack. Oh, sorry. Uh, either a smash a smack or a smatrimony and the judgment is final yes <laughs> yes okay who wants to who wants to go first um i can okay so our first three kind of ties into <laughs> uh some events earlier i think you know who i'm going to say The first three are Robert Pattinson, Paul Dano, and Zoe Kravitz. So, Matthew, Smack, Smash, or Smatrimony? Hmm. This is a hard one. Mm Mm-hmm. Sometimes sometimes there's an, like, obvious when you're looking at the three. And then sometimes it's like, there's there's not an obvious one for this category. (laughs) Um, So, my instinct. Uh Uh-huh. And I'm so sorry to Paul Dano, but I think I'm going to go Smash Pattinson. Okay. Smack Dano, Smatrimony Kravitz? But we're on the same wavelength. Because <laughs> okay. that is also... I'm, I'm glad I'm right. <laughs> yeah, that's also my order. I'm glad I'm, glad I'm right. <laughs> my, my reasoning is... Cannot pass up the opportunity... <laughs> To smash Edward Cullen. <laughs> yeah. When I feel like... I don't really know that much about Robert Pattinson as a person. Yeah. But I don't know that I want to be, like, tied to him for the rest of my life. One time I watched a video where he wanted a hot dog. <laughs> and it was very dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> and I just don't know if I want that much drama in my life. Also, Pattinson, like... 
his like signature move maybe not in his real life but at least for like PR events is he will just lie which is funny I did also know that about him (laughs) (laughs) which is funny and I'm not saying that like the persona of a person that they are during press junkets and stuff is like who they are as a person but it does lead me to believe like if it's that easy for him to lie about things that don't matter Maybe he might lie about things that do, and so I don't think that I could be married to that. But he could mm-hmm. be fun for an afternoon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. And I think, isn't Paul Dano already married to somebody? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> he also does, he, like, I'm sure he's a lovely person. <laughs> he kind of has a snackable face. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it's not as harsh as, like, a, ra- a regular, like, FMK situation. Like, we're just gonna slap Yeah, it's the just boy. like a smack. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a little slap and then we move on. Yeah. Alrighty. So who's your three? Did I take them? No. That that was... I wrote this before the Batman was in the zeitgeist. <laughs> at least in terms of us. So okay. <laughs> that was not one of my three. Oh, but which one do I want to go with first? This one. This one might be fun. Okay. So my three, my first three are Lizzo, Claro, and Karen O. Okay. Mary Lizzo, because I do think that she would treat me right. (laughs) And the way I Mm -hmm. deserve. I'm going to say smack Claro, smash Karen O. Okay. Ours is similar. Okay. But I've I've flipped Lizzo and Karen O. Okay. I feel like Karen O, I could see myself, like, drinking some tea on a porch with. Mm. But I don't know. Claro. Yeah, I think she's the smack. Okay. <laughs> Nothing she, against again, her. Again, she's just... lovely. <laughs> I just needed another O name. (laughs) (laughs) Nothing against her. I get that. I also feel like this game is a little more difficult when it's, like, all, like... Not that it's okay to objectify anybody, but I feel ickier objectifying women. So my answers are not going to be as creative or funny. (laughs) Mm -hmm. But objectifying people is inherently wrong, and I recognize that. Yes. And so that's why we just changed it. To, like, be a little less... Gross. Vulgar. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, I would also agree with you. I tried not to do three women yeah, every time, but... Yeah. I did... Uh, I got into, like, concepts a little bit later. <laughs> and then I got one from... I have a friend in... In uh, the UK who gave me one. Which I'll do next. Ooh. So, this one's from Across the Pond. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> uh, so, the three are Richard Nixon, um, and I quote, a frog that will turn into a prince post-shag, and a sentient toupee. Hmm. They did say a former president, but I did change it because I didn't want to say his name. <laughs> A second former president. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I, I get you. <laughs> um, so. Smack Richard Nixon. Obviously. Easy. Smash. Hmm. Think smash the toupee, <laughs> and then marry the frog. <laughs> so we're assuming that if you marry, you can. You don't smash. You don't smash. So you don't you're smash. just gonna be married to a frog forever. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would probably switch. I'm going to smash the frog. (laughs) 
Because, like, if he's a prince, maybe he'll be one of the princes that, like, helps you kill people. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what royalty does. <laughs> what is this, Game of Thrones? <laughs> uh, I would probably also smack Nixon. And then snatch her money, the toupee, just... So that way I could have the prince help me kill him because the prince is obviously my true lover. <laughs> and that's the final so you're, answer. You're going for the you're going for the insurance policy on the toupee. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Um so my next one mm-hmm. is gonna be the Mothman, the Jersey Devil, the Loch Ness Monster easy smack the jersey let devil smash nessie smatrimony mothman final answer <laughs> i think i'd have to agree with you on that one okay because <laughs> it's the right it's, order it's the obvious choice yeah <laughs> it's the obvious choice um okay tom nook lottie or wardell smack tom nook right off the bat mm-hmm or do you marry Tom Nook, but just be in a loveless marriage where you got the money? No, it's Mac Um Marry Wardell. I guess smash, smash Lottie? Yeah. I guess. Yeah. I mean, Wardell listens. <laughs> mm-hmm. He loves sound. So, like, he would be, like, a very communicative, communi- communicative partner. Mm-hmm. Um, and then yeah, who wouldn't who wouldn't take the ability to smack Tom Nook? <laughs> yeah, smack him so hard that the bells fall out. Yeah, and then Lottie's the third answer. <laughs> <laughs> and then Lottie's there too. <laughs> okay, what's your next okay. one? My next one is Orpheus from Greek myth. Okay. Morpheus, Lawrence Fishburne's character from the <laughs> Matrix movie, and Shakira. <laughs> so Orpheus, Morpheus, and Shakira. <laughs> uh, Mary Shakira, smack Orpheus, smash Morpheus. I don't have a reason other than I would really like to be married to Shakira. I would I would go for the same, but I would only add that I think, if I remember right, doesn't Orpheus, like, trap his lover in hell by accident? That's why I said smack him. Yeah. I was just adding further, uh. <laughs> further reasoning. So, yeah. Good. We did it. Uh, did it. Okay. So my second my second to last one is the concept of time, a very mm. big void, or a burning galaxy. Mm. Smack time. Because who has who's never wanted to smack time? Hmm. <laughs> I guess smash the void. Marry the galaxy? The burning galaxy? Okay. I disagree. I would marry the concept of time. Trap it. <laughs> no more time. <laughs> <laughs> trap it. Trap it in a bottle. Uh, smash the void because it sounds cool. <laughs> very, very emo, very seen into it. Yeah. And then I would probably smack the burning galaxy because I feel like... I don't want to deal with it too much, so just, like, one smack and then moving on. But... But then you'd burn your hand. Yeah. All right. Your turn. Okay. Okay. My penultimate trio. That's a $40 word. <laughs> oh, sorry, I was pulling out the good pepper. <laughs> um, speaking of good pepper, let's do this one. <laughs> Paul Hollywood, 
Gordon Ramsay, Robert Irvine. Who's Robert Irvine? Talk about the Kitchen Impossible. Beefy guy that lied about cooking for the queen. Oh. It's a real it's a real who's who's of smackable Britishmen. Yeah. Um I guess I'm gonna smack Irvine because I don't know what he looks like. Smash Ramsey, Smash Ramoni, Paul Hollywood. Final answer. I would say I would say Smash Robert Irvine. Smack Paul Hollywood, marry Gordon Ramsay. Because I feel like Gordon Ramsay's going to be busy all the time with like MasterChef and his TV shows. So you wouldn't really have to be around him that much. <laughs> and who hasn't ever wanted to smack Paul Hollywood? <laughs> <laughs> and our special guest last year's Great British Bake Off first person to go home. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. So, I'm actually going to let you do your... Because I would like mine to be the very last. So I'm going to let you go one more time, and then I'm going to go, and then we'll wrap everything up. Okay. See, the problem is, I did a bunch of extras, and now I've got to pick who I want my big finale to be. Yeah. Uh, let's go... Rowan Atkinson, Mr. Bean, Johnny English. <laughs> Easy. Smack Johnny English, smash Rowan Atkinson, smack, er, smash Ramoni, Mr. Bean. So you want to live the rest of your human life with Mr. Bean? Yeah, he's going, he, we're just going to keep going to the beach. <laughs> to the beach. <laughs> To the beach. To the beach. To the beach. Yeah, I mean, I would, I would smash Johnny English. <laughs> <laughs> I would probably smack Rowan Atkinson, but I guess that means I would also marry Mr. Bean. So, <laughs> I mean, someone's got to do it, right? Who, who am I to judge? <laughs> Legally, somebody has to, and I guess it'll be me. <laughs> all right, this one's for okay. all the marbles, Matthew. Are you ready? Okay. Smack, smash, and smatrimony. A water nymph, an ice golem, or a really sexy rock. We're smashing that rock. We're just getting that out of the way. I mean, it's really sexy. How can you not? I mean, have you have you seen this rock? <laughs> um. I'm going to say it's going to hurt, but I'm going to smack the ice golem. I'm going to smash Ramoni the water nymph. Final answer. Ding, 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 ding. My buddy, you have just won. <laughs> smack, smash, All smash the marbles. <laughs> because obviously uh, that's the correct answer. <laughs> obviously. You know what you win, Matthew? What? My $50 Olive Garden gift card. <laughs> oh my god, it's what I've always wanted. <laughs> okay, so, so at this point, I'm in control of the gift card. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. I'll keep that in mind. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, Alright, so this has been Rhetorical Magic Cocktail Hour. Mm -hmm. uh thanks so much for listening folks it's been really fun um special thanks and apologies to paul dano <laughs> yes paul dano please forgive us um <laughs> uh follow us on social media and as we say at the end of every episode blink <laughs>
Okay, just like real quick sidebar. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Cut this little bit. Editing Matthew. <laughs> um...